I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jeff Dominguez. And I am Louis Olivas, and we are here to report to you on the conspiracy surrounding the atomic bomb. So, uh, Louis, do you feel that it was actually necessary to drop the atomic bomb on Japan? Well, Jeff, the Japanese made several attempts to end the war in February and June, um, but we chose to ignore it um, because of our small, small faith in our government. So why then did we drop 720,000 leaflets into their city saying that they would... Uh, that they would be destroyed at once if they did not in fact surrender? Well that's a good question Jeff but it is estimated that around 250,000 people remained in the area when the bomb was dropped um, completely, completely ignoring the uh, leaflets that were dropped from the planes. Poor souls. Well, uh, but Harry Truman is quoted as saying that um, that saying that the dropping of the atomic bomb was the greatest thing that ever happened in history. Yeah, Jeff, but Admiral William Leahy said he was a firm opinion that Japan's defeat was only a matter of time and attrition. And how come Hiroshima and Nagasaki were selected as the target for the bombs, even though neither were the uh, military targets, but instead the center of the native Christian population? <coughs> yeah. Wow, I am beginning to see your wisdom. <laughs> In fact, when Roosevelt, when Roosevelt passed away, he was beginning to have second thoughts about the bomb. He even prepared a speech for delivery um, on Jefferson State, but I guess we'll never know what he had to say since he did, in fact, pass away. And if uh, Japan really was resisting, why did they never attack Russia since this would have aided its ally, the Germans, by opening two fronts for Russia? It's theorized that the only reason Russia finally did attack Japan six days after its surrender uh, was to rationalize giving Russia Japanese property since Russia was actually an official enemy of Japan. Yeah, and it possibly could have closed the Russian port of Vladivostok. Uh, correct me if I'm saying that wrong, Jeff. I know you're a major in Russian language, but... Um well, um, and at the port of Vladivostok, this is where much of America's Lend-Lease war material was being unloaded. Um, this action would have aided Germany as it would have eliminated much of the war supplies Russia needed to conduct the war against Germany. And today, we have General George S. Patton. Would somebody please fix the lights? Uh, and on the show today, we have uh, one of the Americans who observed the strange behavior of the American government. Government, please welcome General George S. Patton. How are you feeling today, General Patton? Fine, considering the fact that I have been dead for quite some time now. So, uh... General Pat, what exactly did happen uh, with the events leading to your death? Well, I thought that by retiring, I would be able to expose to the public about the government's betrayal after the war was over. I had a strong dislike for what happened as the Russians acquired much of Eastern Europe. So uh, what prevented you from telling this to the people? After being hospitalized by a suspicious car accident, I was killed by a dose of cyanide deliberately given to me by the Office of Strategic Services. So, uh, who exactly was it? It was Agent Douglas Bazada, a veteran intelligence ex agent. He received a contract on my life and was paid $10,000 for my death. Hmm. Well, thank you, General Patton, for helping us to discover what really did happen. We hope that by having you on our show today, we have cleared up this government conspiracy. Thank you very much, General Patton. Well... It's about time for us to pause for a commercial break, and we'll be right back after these mes messages. Thank you very much. Green clovers, blue diamonds, purple horseshoes. Da -da 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 -da, magic lucky charms, they're magically delicious. Da -da -da -da, eat your lucky charms, yum. Da -da. And that about concludes our uh, investigation on the conspiracy of the atomic bomb. Um, although the, the text um, that we read really didn't go into much detail about the bomb, it, it actually went into more detail, details about um, uh, things Russia decided to do or, you know, 
things that Japan decided to do. It kind of straight off from the path of the atomic bomb. But um, we just feel like that all the events happened was a coincidence. And what do you think? Um, well, Louis, I feel that you're pretty much right on. Um, I feel pretty much the same way you do. Uh, as like, a matter of fact, I pretty much agree with you. Just like, um, and uh, pretty much my ideas are pretty much in accordance <laughs> with yours. Just and, like, and matter of fact, I think that see, it is pretty much uh, coincidences like, um, yeah, like the attacking Russia attacking Japan only like six days before, you know, the, it's Japan's surrender and uh, and the death of General Patton. We think that most of those are coincidences, and that maybe people are just trying to um, catch attention in uh, the public eye. So, um, that's about it, and tune in next week uh, for Homosexuals and the Women That Loves Them. Join us, it'll be a fun show.